everybody. Once again, this is Bobcat Corner, so uh, welcome to the show. Well, honestly, I did not have anything planned for today, but certain uh, scheduling conflicts uh, allowed me to do this for tonight. So here you go. Now, I'm just going to keep this short because i um, getting pretty tired tonight, but what I want to present are some um, new details coming out concerning the uh, college football playoff and also uh, uh, college football uh, conference realignment news, which in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that that huge, but, but it's something worth uh, noting. Anyway, first of all, let's get to the uh, college football playoff um, discussion here real fast. I mentioned it a little bit in the last video that I did concerning the college football playoff, but I am just going to touch up more on that because this is going to be an ongoing discussion concerning you know postseason play and how people should go about you know running such a tournament. Now, it has been recently agreed that um, you know all these conferences they're shifting the uh, format from from a six plus six model to a five plus seven model which i discussed the last video it's now instead of six automatic qualifying bids which makes up um conference champions it's now just five that means just five conference champions are automatically going to get in that means four power conferences and one group of five or a group of whatever number uh conference champion so those are your five automatics. And now you have seven uh, at-large bids. So five plus seven equals 12. But now what we've been getting lately from uh, you know, sporting news reports is that there have been discussions of possibly in the near future, within a couple years from now, starting probably in 2026, and this is the hope, is that they're looking to expand the playoffs yet again from 12 teams to 14 teams at least. That was at least one of the major um, discussion points held recently by all these conference commissioners and all these officials um, in meetings held at Dallas, Texas. And... Um, on one hand, it is interesting to note how steadily we're progressing in all these discussions about, oh, you know, we're expanding to 12 teams for this uh, tournament. And now, like two years later, we're going to expand again. Hopefully, we're going to expand again to 14. Um, on one hand, it's interesting. On one hand, it's it's reassuring in, in some senses. But in other senses you can tell that there's something going on behind the scenes. And mainly, I've brought this up many times in in chat rooms, you know, on videos here, you know, on other YouTube channel videos, is that the Big Ten and the SEC are a dynamic duo of schoolyard bullies. And... I don't take that lightly when I say that. I truly believe that. And I especially believe that's the case with someone like Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC. And to a lesser de degree now, Tony Petiti, the new commissioner of the Big Ten. These two conferences, they hold the most power and the most influence over what goes on in college football, whether you like that or not. Now, if you ask me, I don't like that. I personally don't like that, but that is reality. And knowing that reality, it should not come as a surprise when you read reports about how the Big Ten, the SEC are pushing for such changes. We already got our change to 12 teams for a postseason tournament. Now we're getting talk about, oh, maybe we should get a 14-team playoff or maybe a 16-team playoff. And ideally, I believe that 
if you keep expanding the college football playoff, I believe the ideal number would be 16 teams. That's an even number that flows just fine when you're running a tournament. 16, 8, 4, 2. There you go. I don't have a problem with the number of teams being uh, put in to the college football playoff. The number, you know, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't really matter all that much. Although 16 is ideal. The main problem that has been plaguing this sport for many, many years, at least 15 years, and dare I say many more years before that, the problem has been the format. The problem has been the selection process, how you go about choosing the teams that you want to be in that tournament. It is not a secret, guys, what you've been seeing these last 10 years, which would be the first 10 years of the college football playoff system that we've had. The vast majority of these tournaments, the four-team version of it anyway, the vast majority of these tournaments have always featured either Big Ten or SEC teams. And that is very important to note because that is one big part of why they have so much influence and power. They have brand recognition. They have all the big names. They have you know TV network connections with ESPN and Fox. They obviously have money. That's, you know, you can't understate that. You know, I get it. I totally get it when it comes to all the, you know, revenue making and all the, you know, you got to put butts in seats, you know, you got to have, you know, people pay attention to your product. I get it. Okay. You want to promote what you have. Okay. I get it. But being in my position, you know, I do live in big 10 territory. Okay. You know, I hear about the Ohio state Buckeyes all the time and, you know, naturally, you know, I've grown to liking, you know, Ohio State Buckeye, you know, sports in general, not just football, but just other sports, maybe basketball, sometimes baseball and hockey, even if they're good at it. But the point here is that the rich are getting richer and nobody seems to be addressing that elephant in the room. And the two conferences that symbolize that elephant in the room are just guess, Big Ten and SEC. Now, the Big Ten and the SEC are basically asking for more influence, more influence than they already have, because they want automatic qualifying bids. They want multiple automatic qualifying bids, as in four, at least four teams from each conference. Both conferences are expanding, of course, to at least 20 teams within a couple of years. That's no secret either. But they want four automatic qualifying bids. That goes with their conference champions, but it also goes with the three, supposedly the three next best teams in their conferences, which I do not agree with. I do not agree with whatsoever. And I just feel like this is a big bullying tactic being, you know, put onto these other conferences, you know, by the Big Ten and the SEC. The selection process is the problem. It has been, and it's going to continue to be the problem until we address that elephant in the room. And that's a problem. We don't have other conferences or other entities that are trying to fight against this. Okay. Whether you're the Big 12, the ACC, or your any of the uh, G5 conferences, you know, you need to start speaking up. Okay, if you truly believe in your brand of football, if you truly believe in, you know, your brand of college sports in general, you got to start fighting for it. Okay, if you want viewing masses to believe supposedly that, hey, this is a legitimate product, which, let's be honest, it comes into question a lot, considering what you hear and what you read about what's going on behind the scenes. You know, if you really believe in your product, you got to fight for it. And the actions of these other groups, these other conferences, you know, 
they basically tell me that they're not fighting for it. And that's a problem. So really the number of teams that are in a postseason tournament, that's not the problem. The selection process, who gets to be representative of your tournament, that is the problem. Because you have way too many people over here, Big Ten SEC territory, telling everybody over here, G5 conferences, ACC, Big 12, even independents like Notre Dame, you're having this group telling this group what to do, basically, without coming out and actually saying it. And you want viewing masses to believe that they can just all come together and have this, you know, great, you know, multiple team tournament. Tell me what's wrong with that, guys. Anyway, this will not be the last of you know, speaking about the college football playoff. I guarantee you guys that. But anyway, let's get to uh, some more cheerful news, at least a little bit more cheerful news here. This news just broke out not too long ago, earlier today even. Um, There's been a report that the University of Massachusetts, UMass, they are expected to rejoin the Mid-American Conference, the MAC, starting in 2025. And I will provide a link below to this report. I find this an interesting bit of news because there is a previous history with uh, UMass football in the MAC. And obviously that history did not go so well. UMass was a football only member in the MAC from 2012 to 2015, but that did not go well. They had a 7 and 25 conference record when they were in the MAC in those years. And obviously, that leaves a lot to be desired. But even with that said, you know, being someone who, you know, regularly follows, you know, MAC, you know, sports, I fully, you know, embrace this. I don't see any harm in this. I don't, I don't see any harm in this. And I'm, I'm very thankful that the UMass Minutemen are joining the MAC. Welcome. Welcome back, guys. So, yeah, it's just interesting how these things develop. And this is just like a small report here I'm going to uh, link you guys to. You can read it whenever you want. And um, really, you know, you really have to get a read on what's going on with uh, conference realignment because it goes by fast. It goes by really fast if you're not paying attention. So there's like a lot of movement going on in uh, conference realignment. So much of it not so good, in my opinion. And, you know, even something like this where you have UMass joining the MAC, okay, woohoo, you know, not many people are going to be talking about it. I guarantee that. But it is a good move. It's a good move for UMass. They needed to go somewhere. They were independent for a long time, and they could not stay independent in a climate like this, you know, especially with the college football playoff expanding and trying to get access to that. You can't do it as an independent. And I believe Notre Dame is going to figure that one out soon enough with the way things are going. But yeah, UMass, yeah, welcome back to the MAC. Um, I don't have much of an opinion about UMass because I don't follow UMass sports. But hey, if it benefits them, it benefits them. So yeah, there's that. And speaking of that, with UMass uh, no longer being independent, that leaves only Notre Dame and the University of Connecticut, UConn, as the two remaining independent schools uh, in college football. So those two schools are on the clock. They need to make a decision eventually about what they want to do long term, which conference they're going to join, and how they're going to handle their business. Because really, that's it. The bottom line here, guys, is that everybody needs to be in survival mode. The money's flying everywhere. It's flying every sort of direction. 
and you just have, you know, all these things, you know, all these influential people, you know, coming in and just, you know, trying to shake their fists, you know, telling you how things are. You know, as a college football fan, I just want to watch, you know, quality games. So I want to watch something that's legitimate and not something that's contrived or manipulated or, you know, half butted. Part of my French a little bit, but, you know, if you're running a sporting event, you have to make it legitimate. And one of my deepest concerns about the college football playoff is that underneath it all, it's not legitimate. And in some senses, it may be even worse than what we had before with the bowl championship series, the BCS. Just something for you guys to think about. And this is something I'm going to be talking about more as time goes on here. And yes, going forward here, you you are going to hear um, more stuff here at Bobcat Quarter about the Ohio Bobcats. I am planning on making a little mini series here about the Ohio Bobcats football team, really get into them and just, you know, really, you know, talk about them because if this is going to be called Bobcat Corner, then, Hey, you got to talk about the Ohio Bobcats at some point. Why not? But anyway, uh, if you, if you guys like what you see here, uh, please provide a like to this uh, video and just let me know what you guys think, provide comments down below or contact me. I'll provide my contact information if you want to uh, talk to me via email. Just let me know. I uh, hope you guys have a good night or a good day wherever you're at. Have a good day. Have a good time. Take care.